Today I'd like to demonstrate how to wet pack a silica column. We have a column that has a little plug of cotton in the bottom and that leads to a collection flask. First thing I'll need to do is add a pinch clamp to the tubing. To get the flow to actually stop, I'll need to double up the tubing as such. I have some eluent that I will transfer to a smaller flask. I'm going to pour about four inches of the eluent into my column. And then to create a, an even bottom on the column, I want to add sea sand to the column just over the curved portion of the column. You do not want to use the playground sand that's in the back of your hoods. You want to use nice, clean sea sand. So I'll add it to about a one centimeter or so depth. Again, just to clear the curved portion of the column. Sand will likely stick onto the glassware at the top. You can use some fresh solvent to rinse that down. You to be careful if you use a pipette to rinse the column to make sure that you don't torque the glass. The glass is pretty weak and can snap off and then the pipette will drop down into your column, and that is not a professional look. To prepare a slurry, I add some of my eluent to a beaker, and then add some silica gel to the eluent. I still want the slurry that I'm making to have a, a flow to it so I can pour this um, into the glass column. When it starts getting kind of thick, I stop adding silica and begin to and pour it in. At this point, I can open up the column and allow eluent to collect below. I have more silica to add, so I add more solvent. Wet the silica with the solvent by pouring the silica into the solvent. And pour that quickly into my column. You do need to pour quickly or the silica gel will stay behind in your flask. You can certainly recycle any of the eluent that drips out of the column, and that is very much encouraged. Once the column begins dripping, try to do your best not to stopper the column. Anything that you do that stops the flow will lengthen your lab day. So you want that eluent to continue dripping into the column. Okay, once I've successfully transferred all of the silica to the column, I wait for the silica gel to settle down and I can encourage that settling process with some gentle tapping, either with a piece of tubing or a cork ring a rubber stopper, any of that type of thing will help the silica gel to settle down. Oftentimes, silica gel is stuck at the top of the glass mirror. Again, you can rinse that silica down into the column by pulling some solvent off the top of the column and using it to rinse the glassware. Of course, you're welcome to use a funnel instead of pouring freehand. That's perfectly acceptable as well. Usually takes a few minutes of tapping for the silica gel to settle completely. And usually if I want to test whether or not the silica gel has settled, I'll use a finger to mark the top of the silica height. 
I'll tap for a few minutes. Being careful not to move my finger. And then check to see if the silica gel has dropped. Usually takes a couple of minutes of tapping for the silica to settle. Once you feel the silica has settled, you do want to add a band of sea sand across the top of your silica gel. You do want some solvent on top of the silica. That solvent will help the sand not to just crash into the top of that silica gel, but to float down gently and evenly onto the silica. You really want a very thin layer. And you're probably going to either need to turn the column or change the angle at which you're pouring the sand to get an even level of sand across the top. You're looking for a few millimeters thick and hopefully the level of your silica is flat after the addition of the sand. At this point, we're actually ready to begin loading sample onto the column. The problem is there's too much solvent on the top of the sample. If you have a pipette in which you can reach the solvent, it's perfectly acceptable to remove some of that solvent from the top of the column. I want the solvent to drop down to the level of the sand, down into the sand, but I don't ever want the silica gel to dry. I always want solvent to be on the silica gel as long as there is something on the column that I want to get off. Before you load a sample onto the column, it's a good idea to check your drip rate. If the column is dripping very slowly, several seconds between drops, be a good idea to pack a new column. It would be faster to pack a new column than it would be to elute a sample through this column. The culprit is usually cotton packed too tightly into the column to allow eluate to flow through rapidly. You should be seeing a drop every second or so. Uh, two to three seconds between drops is okay. Any longer than that, it's a good idea to get a new column. I have a sample of paprika extract that I'm going to load onto this silica column. But I can't load it on until the solvent has reached the level of the sand. At this point, I'm ready to add my sample to the column. The level of the liquid has dropped into the level of the sand. I use a pipette and very carefully, slowly add solvent and compound. It's actually a sample dissolved up in some of the compound to the top of the column. The eluent is still clean and it doesn't have any sample in it. So I'm going to reuse solvent. To complete the transfer, I'm going to use a little bit of the solvent to rinse my sample vial. And once this sample has dropped into the level of the sand, I will do some rinses. I need to rinse the glassware, I need to rinse the sand, and put the sample down into the silica gel. Now that the sample is completely down within the sand, I'm going to use the first rinse to squirt about a milliliter of sample rinse and the eluent onto the top of the column. And I'll wait for that to drip down into the sand. The first wash is now below the level of the sand. So I use fresh eluent to rinse a second time, about one milliliter. And 
now for a third rinse of the sample onto the silica. Now that the third rinse is complete, I can fill the top of the column with eluent. I want to do this slowly to be careful not to disturb the top of the column. So at first, I'll use a pipette, and when I build up the height of the eluent, I can then carefully pour solvent onto the top of the column. Again, it's very important not to disturb the top of the silica gel on the column. I recommend a height of two inches or so on the solvent on top of the sand before you attempt to carefully pour solvent into the column. a little bit of a solvent buffer on top of the column. I'm going to very, very carefully, very slowly pour solvent to fill the rest of the glass column. This will increase your drip rate out of the bottom of the column as the weight of the solvent now will begin pushing through the column more quickly. I can already see separation in the column. Zooming in on the top of the column, you can see that a yellow band is moving more quickly through the column than the other components. Looks like there's some orange behind the yellow and some deep red at the top of the column. When the components begin eluding, you would simply switch collection flasks to collect each band as it eludes. There's clean solvent coming out of the column now you could begin collecting your first band now, but it's nothing but solvent that would need to be evaporated on a rotovap, which takes time. So I typically wait until the first component approaches the bottom of the column before I begin collecting. As long as sample is not yet eluding from the column, you can recycle your solvent. Once bands begin to elute, do not recycle the solvent onto the column. Once the first band approaches the bottom of the column, the sand, you can switch to a collection flask for the first band. Again, this solvent's clean right now. I can recycle it if I want. The first band has reached the sand and is eluding into the collection flask. I can also see some separation between a component here and whatever is more polar and still stuck to the column. I'm seeing a little bit of white silica developing here in the middle. So here's a yellow band that's coming off. There's definitely a darker orange red band that's coming off. And then if I switch to more polar solvents, I can get some of these more polar components to elute from the column. The yellow band has almost completely eluded, so I would switch collection flasks. You can see we definitely have something in this first fraction, at least one component of a paprika extract. And then if I were actually doing the paprika experiment, I would probably collect uh, this material in a waste fraction. I would go ahead and switch to a more polar solvent. 
So I would probably uh, pull the solvent eluent that's on top now off the top of the column and add a more polar solvent. I would collect, this is my second band, and then I would probably collect this as my third band. It's a very faint band. It's not very concentrated. But that's how I would proceed if I were going to continue with this column. When you have collected all the fractions that you wish to collect, it's very easy to clean out the column. Get a large beaker from your hood. Turn the column over, uh, upside down into the beaker. Use a piece of copper wire to remove the cotton plug. As soon as you do, all the contents of the column come pouring out. 